Hello and welcome to Open and Shut Book Reviews. My name is Ken. Thanks for joining me. And this is a very brief review of Stephen Hawking's book, Brief Answers to the Big Questions. So it's a brief review because there's no spoiler couch for this one. It's nonfiction. It's not really any spoilers to be had of, of note. A lot of the topics that Stephen Hawking covers in his book, he's covered in other online publications uh, and in previous books that he's written. I will tell you some of the more interesting little tidbits that I picked up along the way, and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. <laughs> So the actor Eddie Redmayne, who played Hawking in the film The Theory of Everything, does the introduction for Hawking's book. And he says in there he got to meet Hawking, obviously, when he was working on the production. And when Stephen Hawking saw the film, he said of Redmayne's performance of him, he was moved by it but there should be more physics and fewer feelings. <laughs> Hawking is the only person I'm aware of who's had a temperature named after them. It's called the Hawking temperature, and it's actually an equation that is used to determine the temperature of a black hole based on its size. <laughs> when Hawking was a kid, a V2 rocket bombed a house just down the street from his house and he and his childhood friend played in the crater. His first book, A Brief History of Time, was published on April Fool's Day in 1988. So he talks uh, about the big questions as is evidenced by the title of the book as far as is there a god, how was the universe created, is the possibility of time travel realistic, that kind of thing. And the concepts throughout the book are interesting, don't get me wrong, but I, there was so much of this book that just, whew, <laughs> just right, right over. Even after reading it a couple of times, I, some of the concepts I kind of get, uh, like when he's talking about the the Big Bang Theory and the fact that it's okay that they can't explain anything that happened prior to the Big Bang Theory because there's no time before the Big Bang happened. So there's no pre-time before time. I would suggest if you're going to read this book that you do so with a couple of glasses of this, maybe. Certainly couldn't hurt. I. I appreciate the contributions that Hawking made to the scientific community and the world at large. However, he's not accessible to me in the way that Neil deGrasse Tyson is accessible. Neil deGrasse Tyson is able to explain complex concepts in a way that I can get. So yeah, I, I read this book and felt a little dumber after having read it. It's still interesting for the little factoids that you learn about him as a person along the way, and it's, uh, they're all very interesting topics. I learned a new word, retrodict, which apparently is the opposite of predict. So predicting in reverse, retroactively predicting the past, something like that. Again, whiskey. So he talks about is time travel possible? Should we colonize space? Not can we, but should we even attempt it? He talks a little bit about artificial intelligence and the role that he thinks that uh, it will come to play in our lives as we move forward. All very fascinating topics. So if you have a passing curiosity about any of these uh, subjects, then I would recommend this to you. Like I said, it's worth it just for the, the personal anecdotes that you pick up along the way. He evidently had a wicked sense of humor, and that is evident at various parts throughout this book. So I'll put the link down in the description below for you. And as always, if you have any questions or requests for books for me to review, go ahead and send them to me, ken at openandshutreviews.com. I'll let you go for now, but until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care and read more books.